Hi, Rana. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Do you want to be host or? Yeah, I, I've already pushed the class to live, okay. so I'm all good, yeah. All right. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing Since great. The last class of the uh, the week, huh? Yep, yep. Right, last class. <laughs> we're, we're finishing it up. Yeah. Although I do have tomorrow. I have classes tomorrow. Okay. I'm off tomorrow. Oh, well, that's good. You're probably excited. Yep. <laughs> it's very exciting. Quite a few people signed up, too. I think I'm going to give you the list of names. Hey, Donna. Hi, how you doing? Fine. I don't know that I can stay the whole evening, but I just couldn't miss my Friday night art group. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad you came in here. <laughs> I'll tell you, so much, some of these people, Susan, I see, and I think almost, I think she takes every class I take. Oh, yeah, really? I think, yeah, I mean, great minds run in the same, uh, same gutter, as they say, right? Uh, same gutter. <laughs> I just saw Susan earlier today. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Hi, Verna. Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hello. I, I've got dinner here, so if you see me black myself off, it's just to be polite and not eat in front of anybody. No problem. I'm eating my popcorn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, it is nighttime. I mean, you may as well, right? <laughs> I'll give some people a chance to get in here before we get started. Well, you'll be glad you came, Melinda, because I was thinking of the discussion we had earlier this week about the, the pre-Raphaelites, and I have uh, found a nice little video on them. Oh, you know what? Also, after looking at your, uh, you know, I checked out the video from 101 that was so good, and with it, near it was um, a real interesting one. I'll, I'll see if I can send you the link for another one on the girl with the pearl earring, mm -hmm. and it also had to do with what makes, um, well, for one thing, there were a couple of them, but one of them was in the museum themselves where they were um, through a new process, photographing all the layers to try mm -hmm. to figure out how Vermeer actually painted and layered the, the paint to get this real luminosity. And they were also pointing uh -huh. out what's the difference in, you know, and they had a reproduction there in the, um, in the gallery to take its place that had the, the paint texture and all that. And, and oh. were, what's the difference between a really good re reproduction and seeing the, the real piece. And they were right. talking about until you see the real piece, you can't see the, the layering of how light and everything affects the paint and exactly how and thick how it is really, and how, you know, that, yeah. what to look for, but and, um, how that, that painting is just referred to in the museum as, is she? Never she that's it. He is. <laughs> Wasn't there some story about Vermeer and uh, camera, uh, camera obscura? Did um, I, there's hear some. That, sir? Well, there's some. There's some. They don't know for sure because they know so little about Vermeer. Some speculation, but, though. But the the camera obscura was sort of coming into being and because of his use of perspective, but whether or not he used it or not, they don't know. It was, it's just a, a theory. And, um, but um, anyway, very, some, some, some interesting pieces on it. And also kind of how he was not famous in his time. And it was not until really the late uh, 19th century that an art collector discovered him and really started really pushing mm. it. Yeah, that, that brought him to the forefront. Yeah, there's a lot of famous people that almost almost just went into obscurity. <laughs> well, the other one is the painter that did the Goldfinch, you know, is also a Dutch painter that, from Delft um, who died at the age of 35 in that gunpowder explosion that happened in Ooh. Delft, killed a lot of people. But mm. killed, And there's some question of whether or not Vermeer studied under him. 
Oh. Of course, you know how few of his pieces are left because of him dying so young. But the right. two pieces sit across from each other in the huh. uh, Murat's house. Huh. But, uh, but oh, it does right. make it, yeah. It's one reason I realized it's why I always enjoy seeing the, the paintings in person and, uh -huh. you know, end up spending sometimes a half an hour, an hour with pieces just because they really... It, I know it, once you really see them, right, and and then after a while, there's some that like going back to the um, National Gallery in D.C. There's some pieces that's just like you just have to go visit them, like they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know now that things are opening up, I need to make my uh, museum rounds. But it is, I think, the difference between pieces that are quote famous that we all see. And then to get to see them in person is a different experience. So that's why the more, the more you expose yourself to, to books and reproductions before you actually see the real piece, makes it a little more exciting when you do. Yeah, when you know more of the story behind it and everything. All right, well, I wanna get started on our art discussion tonight. I wanna welcome everyone, we'll get set up. Seniors teaching seniors about technology and sometimes we're doing art. <laughs> Tonight is our art discussion evening where we discuss art and we play a little name that masterpiece just to drive ourselves crazy <laughs> to see if we can identify famous masterpieces. Uh, my name is Donna. I'm your guide for tonight. Um, I was in the IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people get over the fear of technology. You can get a request, you can request the recording of this session by emailing help at getsetup.io. And we're not paid to promote any of the products tonight. So we're just going to have fun and take a look at some uh, famous pieces. What I'm going to start with is um, we had an earlier discussion in our Art History 101 class about Raph, the pre-Raphaelites. Oh, boy. It's late for me. I'm going to play for you uh, a video I found that will explain what they are at this particular period and the type of uh, art that they were. So who are the pre-Raphaelites and what are their contribution to art? Let's take a quick look at the who, why and where. Take a walk with me and look at some beautiful paintings while figuring out why they created a brotherhood. See you, on the other side. The Sunday Painter. Please click and subscribe. Hit the like button and don't forget the little bell so Sounds you will like be the first when we have an inspirational place. idea. Well, pre-Raphaelites hold a special place in my heart. When I was a younger artist, a much, much younger artist, I would spend hours looking at the jewel-like pictures. Checking out the same art books time after time, out of the school library and lug them home. Like a kid in a candy store I would get more than I could carry, and some of the books had a lot of gravity attached to them sitting at home thinking of fame and fortune if I could paint this way. Getting out my number two pencil, and with my imagination, I was going to set the world on fire, drawing all of the paintings. To become one of them, and learn the quality they had in their work. Now looking back, I never read any of the art books, or why they did what they did. My mind would ponder on the adventures and the designs of the flowing lines, that was like watching smoke that I wanted to emulate. Now much later in life, I see that if I learned about the artist that I admired, and wanted to be, it would have added a depth I could not perceive at the time of my younger self. Every time I revisit these movements, it adds a new point of view, which makes my art better. If I could go back in time I would tell my younger self, read the books and ask the questions, why? Now, on to the Pre-Raphaelites. The Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, later known as the Pre-Raphaelites, was a group of English painters, poets, and art critics, founded in 1848. There were seven members who formed the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood was only ever a loose association of artists. William Holman Hunt, John Everett Millay, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, William Michael Rossetti, James Collinson, Frederick George Stevens, and Thomas Woolner. I will do individual videos on these artists later. The group sought a return to the abundant detail, intense colors and complex compositions. The Brotherhood believed the classical poses and elegant compositions of Raphael, 
hence the name pre raphaelite The group accepted the concepts of history painting, to imitation of nature, as central to the purpose of art. They defined themselves as a reform movement, created a distinct name for their form of art, and published a periodical, The Germ, to promote their ideas. The group's debates were recorded in the pre raphaelite journal. The Brotherhood separated after almost five years. Influenced by Romanticism, the members thought freedom and responsibility were inseparable. They were particularly fascinated by medieval culture, believing it to possess a spiritual and creative integrity that had been lost in later eras. The emphasis on medieval culture clashed with principles of realism which stressed the independent observation of nature. The pre raphaelite Brotherhood was greatly influenced by nature and its members used great detail to show the natural world using bright and sharp focus techniques on a white canvas. In attempts to revive the brilliance of color found in Quattrocento art, Hunt and Millet developed a technique of painting in thin glazes of pigment over a wet white ground in the hope that the colors would retain jewel-like trend bright and sharp focus techniques on a white canvas. Developing a Technique of Painting in Thin Glazes The Brotherhood found support from the critic John Ruskin, who praised its devotion to nature and rejection of conventional methods of composition. The pre-Raphaelites were influenced by Ruskin's theories. By 1853 the original PRB had virtually dissolved, with only Holman Hunt remaining true to its stated aims. But the term pre-Raphaelite stuck to Rossetti and others, including William Morris and Edward Burne Jones. After 1856, Dante Gabriel Rossetti became an inspiration for the medievalizing strand of the movement. He was the link between the two types of pre-Raphaelite painting, nature and romance, after the PRB became lost in the later decades of the century. Rossetti, although the least committed to the Brotherhood, continued the name and changed its style. He began painting versions of femme fatales. The ideals of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood influenced many interior designers and architects, arousing interest in medieval designs and other crafts leading to the arts and crafts movement. The pre-Raphaelite desire for more extensive affiliation between painting and literature also manifested in illustration. Illustration is a more direct unification of these media and, like subject painting, can assert a narrative of its own. For the pre-Raphaelites, and Dante Gabriel Rossetti specifically, there was anxiety about the constraints of illustration. Rossetti's desire to not just support the poet's narrative, but to create an allegorical illustration that functions separately from the text as well. In this respect, pre-Raphaelite illustrations go beyond depicting an episode from a poem, but rather function like subject paintings within a text. The Brotherhood was a group of young men, who challenged the art establishment of the day. Inspired by the real world around them, yet took imaginative license in their art. With Rossetti came to be seen as a precursor of the wider European symbolist movement. It is important to remember that the pre-Raphaelites were not only dreamers, but also innovators. The movement united them in their refusal to recognize boundaries between literature and fine art, their insistence on experimenting with material, form and technique, and their irrepressible, unrespectable spirit in an age that prized conformity. There you have it, dreamers who love nature with painting and literature. Seeking to make the art a better place. So uh, that was interesting. The uh, the um, colors are unbelievable. Um, they're just as strong in person. Oh, they're strong right there on the video, and the video is probably the worst uh, <laughs> representation of anything. Um, yeah, the pop. It just pops the colors. That one painting with the woman on the bed with her night her nightgown, the colors on that was incredible. Did they show Ophelia, um, the one of the, you know Ophelia floating in the water? Okay. Oh, I, that one, the one I always like. Yeah, no, yeah. they didn't show that one, but now it, now I understand when you say that looks that that's what that is. Um, the color is that color. That's yeah, but also up. yeah, the detail and the romance. But I saw that piece in person in the the. The detail of all the flowers, and I mean, were so in plant life was so realistic. Um, well, even though what the video just showed, I mean, they are they're very realistic. Uh, I was looking at the hands of one of the uh, subjects there, and it was just incredible the how right. lifelike almost, it is. Almost super photo realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the photo realism. Um, yeah. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video. I thought it was the kind of an interesting one to learn about that. And I'll give you a link. And I found a couple other videos about them, uh, the Brotherhood, that you can enjoy on your own. All right. Anybody have any comments they want to make or anything about what the video? Go ahead. Very spectacular and um, so romantic. Yes. So romantic. Yes. I, I haven't actually ever seen the, like something like this, actually a discussion of, of that era, but uh, yeah. extremely romantic, uh, gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to probably ever have a chance to see them in person, but it's nice to explore even on this way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and it, you can just, the clothes, the way they painted everything was just beautiful. And, and like romantic. I said, I think I'm going to, there's going to be about three other videos that I will include in the email okay. so you can right. enjoy. Because one of them is a documentary from BBC. It's about a half hour long. So uh, okay. that'll be an email. Um, there's a couple in the Chicago Art Institute, as far mm -hmm. as here in the United States, they're pretty well known. And then, like I said the other day, the Tate Museum in London is probably where most of them are. Um, they manage to collect most of them. And they have a huge room of them because like they said, it was a pretty short period that Brotherhood only hung together five years. And um, so it's, it's, it's a not, small group of paintings. But um, yeah, the Tate in London is, is sort of known to, to where to go see them. But there are, there are some of them spread all over the place. Mm, they're beautiful. Yeah, the colors is just breathtaking. All right. Too bad Mary's not here. She was the one that brought it up. I know, I know. I was hoping she would be here, and I was waiting a little bit, and uh, <laughs> no luck. Oh, well. Uh, I'm eating maybe... spaghetti, so it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> no, it sounds good, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I better mute. All right, let's... Uh, Let's go and uh, let me get this video out of here. It's for them and artists to come. If you like. Hmm. All right. It's like looking at the cover of romance novels. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Much. <laughs> Reminiscent. Now, come on, Fred. It's better than that. <laughs> romance novels. <laughs> Oh, Fred. <laughs> Fred, do you have a stack of those by your bedside? Of course. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. This is the first picture that we have up today. Um, I like the, uh, oh, look, at she's got a, is that a an antelope or a deer? Deer, it looks like, yeah. yeah. Or a goat. Looks Spanish goat? for some reason. I don't know. Why? Has well, it might be a deer. It has horns. Yeah, it looks like a pronghorn, a small. Yeah. Cute. Mm -hmm. I say I, it's. I say it's F. A. Brigham, Brigman, because I see his signature down at the corner. Ah, there you go. <laughs> cheater, well, cheater. Well, looky, looky, she got it right. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful, though. I like. I like the, um, I don't know, it's just the whole. It's part of the romantic period. It's not quite, it. yeah, not quite pre raphaelite but very mm. close. Yeah, it's pretty. All right, let's, let's bring out our next one here. Oh, I love this one. That's the oh, yeah. <laughs> This is the one that's uh, what? What did we determine? Four hundred years, four hundred years ahead of his time. Yeah, the Garden of Four Earthly Delights, fourteen ninety-five. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, there it is. Actually, the Garden, of, Garden of Earthly the Delights. Right. And this was the commission, right, for the church? It, yeah, it was supposed to be an altarpiece. It's a trip. Yeah. I'm sure they were so thrilled to see this. Oh, yeah, I must <laughs> love that. That went over big, didn't it? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet there were crickets, crickets in the room when he first showed it. They were like, what is going on here? <laughs> Actually, I was in Holland when they had a whole um, piece of this work. I mean, a whole, um, what do you call it? They, they, married, they managed to bring on all his work from all over the world and show it in one place. And all the rooms to, to preserve it were in complete darkness. You almost needed a a flashlight to see your way through, but really? pretty incredible. Um, Are all his works like this? Oh or, yeah, really? And they're they're very early. I mean, fourteen. It's it's before the Renaissance, so um, I'd say probably fourteen hundreds, thirteen, fourteen hundreds. They're very yeah. This one was painted in fourteen ninety five. So okay, thank um, you. thanks. Yeah. Susan. And uh, Amanda, you have your hand raised. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah, I think Melinda was talking about where this was exhibited, and it's in his hometown of Hurtenbosch. Right. Oh. And they had the museum there, and most of his works are all in the Prado in Madrid, or in, uh, yeah, Madrid. I and saw so this. So they borrowed all that stuff from him. And it's all very a way to teach the religion, because on the first panel, you can see the Garden of Eden with. Um, obviously God and, and Adam and Eve, and then the orgies that took place. And at the very mm -hmm. end is everything that they used in the orgy was held against them. Oh. It's just so um, surrealism. <laughs> really? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, if, if you saw He's... this today, you would say that was surrealism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's just crazy because it does, his contemporaries, you know, it's like he was completely in his own little, little box. <laughs> just, I wonder what he was. I wonder what he was smoking. Oh, he had to have been on something. He was definitely <laughs> every day. Of hell on the right side. Well, every no. day he was there with his pipe or whatever they were doing. No, yeah, but smoking exactly. some opium, I think probably. <laughs> Ooh. But exactly, they were done for the church for the people that couldn't read to pretty much <laughs> tell you straighten up or this is where you're going. Yeah, that would scare you. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I love this one though. This is great. I just that want to be great. that fly on the wall when he presented this thing. <laughs> oh, I hear that. Oh my. <clears throat> The colors on that robe. Yeah, beautiful. Any any guesses on that one? Hmm. All right, let's see who it is. Edmund Blair Layton. What period do you think this is? Mm. Any guesses? I was going to say late 1800s. Mm. Okay. Speaking about smoking opium. Speaking of this, <laughs> speaking of the devil. There you go. Oh, there I'm, you go. I know that. I know that. I've seen that piece, but I can't remember who did it. Any guesses, no. anyone? But you're right about the opium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, it's why? Oh, okay. So oh, that's man, it's creepy. It is creepy, isn't it? He's, he's a modern artist. I mean, he's, now, N.C. Wyeth is an illustrator, book illustrator, illustrator. Uh, children's books, probably the most yeah. famous children's book illustrator. But that's why I'm surprised that it's used with okay. this group. It is a little creepy, though. Yeah, it is. It's got a little. As if opium dens aren't a little creepy. Well, that's true. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Mm, it is. I'm going to say Canaletto. Anyone else have any other guesses? That sounds good. 
<laughs> yep. You got it. Great guess. The entrance to the Grand Canal Vents. I've beautiful. been there. Love it. That's a beautiful one there. That is nice. Hmm. It looks like the bead, but I don't think it is, but it's that period kind of thing. Benjamin West. Agrippina. Mm -hmm. That's American. Yeah. Wendy Agrippina. All right, next one. Whoa. I've never yeah. seen this one before. Wow. But we saw a similar painting like this somewhere recently, I thought. Hmm. Looks like a group of people over here on the right you can barely make them out. Hmm. All right. Nikolai G. What year was this painted? Yeah. Let's look him up. Did anybody heard of him before? No, I haven't. Let's see. Ouch. Would you do this one? Oh, here we go. 1891. Okay, thank you. It's in the, oh boy, Tretyokov Gallery in Russia. Passion cycle, really. Hmm. Whoa, nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Look at the mountains wow. over here. Wow. That's gorgeous. Pretty. Wow. Stunning. Cool. Oh, it's never, Thomas Cole. I've never oh. seen it, but yeah, Thomas Cole. That's, oh, my that's God. Cole? It could be a Cole. That's way. stunning. Yeah, it is. is that Frederick Church or Thomas Cole or one of those? Let's see here. Or Albert Bierstadt. Yeah, but <laughs> oh, there you go. You got it. I get Albert Bierstadt. Okay. There you go. At the last good. minute, you got Very it. Very good, Muriel. <laughs> wow. That's you know, beautiful. I, um, I, took a, I took a webinar from the Putnam Museum upstate. Um, and they did, um, the webinar was all on Thomas Cole. But they uh -huh. brought in other artists. Bierstadt was one of them. How oh. he, how he painted. So it was uh, Church and Cole and Bierstadt. That whole, the whole group, the Hudson River group. All right. So yeah, this is quite Beautiful. quite the painting. Mm -hmm. He has one in the Brooklyn Museum. Is that the one, or is that Church? There's a big painting in there, in the American area, American art. Hmm. I think it's fish that too. That's yeah, gorgeous. Yikes. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my. I think All we right. saw this one before too, or something. Something's something. happening. Well, it's the it's the sixteen hundreds as far as the subject matter, but Okay, any guesses? Some battle. <laughs> some some battle somewhere. Oh, somebody somebody running coming in 
Someone's oh, in, in Buddha. Oh, they're stopping the. Uh, I guess the Chateau uh, Buddha. So it'd be Hungarian and or. Um, Gilua Pensor. Well, during that time, weren't the weren't the Turks? Um, I mean, they stopped them at at, at Vienna, and. Right. All that, all that, it was in the 16, it's yeah. like 1685 or something like that. This would be during, yeah, when the Habsburgs, yeah, and all that, right, when they push the, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. Hmm. That looks like Rubens. You know what? It's the same guy they just had. Ben's <laughs> oh. <laughs> baptism okay. of Stevens. Oh, there you go. King, King of Hungary. Yes, King of Hungary. Hungary. Oh. <laughs> David. David. You know I the name of it? I studied this one. <laughs> it's uh, Oath of the Horatio. Yeah, yeah, Oath of the Horatio. They were deciding what side they wanted to fight on. <laughs> Who's going to kill who? Who's going to, yeah. And the, it's a reference. And the, and the women are on that. Uh, they're on the, it, was, um, it was a type of art. I know is oh, all right. Well, this was all pre French Revolution when a lot of stuff was referring back right. to democracy of, of Greece and Rome. Right. <laughs> ah, I Napoleon. Napoleon and I. Uh, is that Delacroix? I don't think so. No, nope, no. Nope. But it's famous. Colors are gorgeous on this one. No, we ought to know. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This is a famous one. It, right. It's the same time period as Delacroix, but it's David again. David. Napoleon Holy crossing God. the Alps. Yeah. Wow, that's a great, very stunning. I think that's in the Louvre. Some guy that needs to be on a diet. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> is that Turner or is this somebody in the British school, the British art? Turner or <laughs> oh, he was no, I saw at the Brooklyn Museum a painting at the Brooklyn. Yeah, Hope he's not gonna be in battle. <laughs> No, I guess not. There you go, Reynolds. Oh, okay, is that okay? The Admiral. His wife got pregnant, and he was jealous, so he decided. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right. <laughs> I'm going to say Boulard. But that's nice. Mm -hmm. Playing dominoes. No, it's too oh. tight to be Boulard. Uh oh. It's She's got colors. Yeah, that's the colors are. All right. I'll, I'll give you a second guess here. <laughs> Not that good. Okay. Hit it. All right. All right. <laughs> the brand family. Domino. Never heard of him. Mm -mm. But it's nice. Yeah. It All righty.
Ooh, wow. Ooh. That's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Yes. Really. It looks like an allegorical, like it means something else. It's standing for mm -hmm. with the uh, bandage in. She's got a liar in it. She's... She's sitting on top of the world. the world. Yeah, it looks like on top of the world there. All right, here it is. Watts. Okay. Hope. hope. Wow. Doesn't look too hopeful. I know. That does oh. not look hopeful at all. No. Oh. Pretty though. That's interesting. Oh, a sad gesture. <laughs> <laughs> he lost hope. Yeah. <laughs> He's off the clock. Yeah. <laughs> he's waiting, to, he's waiting to go on Saturday Night Live. There <laughs> you go. There you got it. Oh, any guesses? He's in the green room. He's in the green room. <laughs> John Matejko. Matejko. Sounds like he's an unknown. Yeah. Sounds... Polish or Eastern mm -hmm. European. Huh. It's not cassette, is it? No, no. No. We're too tight. Too tight. But it's nice. Mm. But I, I, I think it's going to be another unknown. Yep. Tarbell. Tarbell. Reading. Tarbell. Huh. Mm. What year was he? Let me see. Well, looks like 1800s. Wonder if he was related to Ida Tarbell. Oh. Big trust buster. A <laughs> trust buster. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Even shows up here. There's a lot of girl reading. Oh, here it is. 1909. <laughs> Was known as an impressionist, American impressionist. Oh, the um, um what's Tarbell. his name? Tarbell. Tarbell, yeah. Hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Colors and the very nice, very realistic. Very. <clears throat> Any guesses? Another unknown. You're you're pulling all these unknown on us. George Washington Lambert. No. Lambert. These are beautiful. I guess there's so many artists that we don't know or have heard of. Some holiday. Hmm. Well, I guess he's got his fish and Yeah, he's got a lot pony. of fish. <clears throat> and a pony. Is that a dog behind or two ponies? No two ponies? Two it's, ponies. A, it's just one pony. And oh, then one, the, oh, the other pony. two, the other two legs are moms, and the other, the front two legs are the boys. Yeah, I know. For a second, I thought there was a second horse too. Yeah, I did yeah. too. It's all those people's legs, but horse with shoes on, real shoes yeah. on, real <laughs> shoes. <laughs> the horse on the way to the beach in his yeah. fine sandals. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. this is familiar. That's the wreck of the Hesper. I mean, the um, the slave ship. That's uh, that boy. That thing is huge. It sits in the Louvre. Um, oh, is, is it, it the, the slave ship? No, no. It's no. it's a wreck. There, it, it's 
the wreck of, of something and those are the survivors all you know held together on a raft and it's the same time period as David and Delacroix but it's someone else it's their most famous painting and I just isn't that the raft of the Medusa Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yep. That's right. yeah. That, um, Jericho. There go. Jericho. Jericho. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Jericho is that the third one of that group, and I just couldn't remember his name. Well, you got that right away. Oh, we've oh, seen this wow. one. Oh, that oh, is that's beautiful. Gorgeous. That's a pre raphaelite there. That is stunning. That is beautiful. Yeah, we saw this before, and it is pretty. That is beautiful. Colors Any guess, incredible. Guess yeah. on who it is? I know, the colors are just cool. Mm. Oh, it's either... I'm going to say Burn Jones. No, Lighten. Like Lord Blaming June. June. Wow. Oh, and look is, at the what is that the ocean over here yeah, on this? Yeah, the beautiful, yeah. Water. Beautiful. Off the horizon there. Mm. Mm. Although he wasn't one of oh John uh, Malay. Oh, wow. Malay, the gleaners. The the gleaners. Malay. Malay. The gleaners, right? The gleaners, yeah. The gleaners. Yeah. Finally, something famous. Realism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's that. Well, that's that period that came. Um, you know that we study where the common man starts to be. Yep. Um, All so about social, the social issues of the day. Common man. Yeah. That's nice, but no idea who it is. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, no guesses. Nope. Woman near the dinner table. Carl, no. <laughs> Another unknown. He can come up with a better name than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Just it's very descriptive, though. It yeah. Definitely describes it. I'm agreeing. Ah. <laughs> Agreed. Is that before two? Yep. The um, man. Does anybody know what the meaning is behind all this? So. Well, I'm guessing that's the that's the apple in the Garden of Eden that the apple. Son of man, Adam. <laughs> Did he do the painting of the pipe? Yes. Yeah, the pipe. Because yeah. I, I, when I was doing uh, taking a course in philosophy, that was that was a big piece of part of it at the beginning about the pipe. Is it a pipe? Is it not a pipe? It's, also, he did that one of the, the rider through the woods where the trees, it, it blocks out and, and uh -huh. it's like the, where the trees are is the horse and then where the, the horse is is the trees. In other words. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't get this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is it for you if you can. That, that was a softball there. Yeah. I told you I'm going to the impression in San Francisco in July. Are you? Yeah. What, yeah. what is it going to be a Pacific artist or is it just going to be on the impressionist? Just Van Gogh. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just Van Gogh, right? Yeah, which which a, museum? It's actually not in a museum. It's in oh. uh oh, I forget. It's on Van Ness even. Oh, no, it's, okay, a, it's a it's a uh, it's not a art exhibit. It's a production, I guess you'd call it. Sort of like a sound and light 
kind of like a light show. Oh, the oh, the Van Gogh Experience. That's right. They're having it. They're having it in New York. They just yeah, there's one of the lights going around the country. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. It's right under like um, not in Dumbo. It's like off the pier, one of the piers in Manhattan. Yeah. An experience. Yeah, yeah, the Van Gogh experience. Exactly. Yeah. The Van Gogh experience. So it's not going to be actual paintings. It's just no. Be no. Like an immersive, like it's supposed to be an immersive experience. Oh, there's exactly. Van Gogh. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. And there you yeah. go. That's cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hmm. It's an interesting one. Kind of looks a little like Freud. No. Seeing <laughs> Freud it kind of makes me think of his stuff. Oh yeah. Well, but it's not. I don't think it is. It's in a Y because they. Let's see the hermits. All right. Let's see who it is. Um, we the elderly nude man in the sun. <laughs> Never heard of him? Nope. 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 His name's in the upper left. <laughs> Half cut off. <laughs> she, she keeps uh, looking. Holbein. Holbein, right? <laughs> yep. National Gallery in London. The younger. The younger, right? Holbein, right? Oh, really do you like notice the, the do you notice the, the skull in the bottom? In the very bottom, there's a skull that if you stand at a certain angle, it looks oh, right here. Skull, but it's been distorted. So when you look straight on, it doesn't make any sense. But if you stand off to the side, it's oh, a th this is a skull. skull. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Did you, did you just hear the one about the marble uh, skull that they? found it was a Bernini. They just, uh, this kind of was been around, but they just identified it recently. It was in the news. Hmm. Oh, everything. Some kind of allegory, but no, Some I, serious I, partying. It's a big, <laughs> big party going on here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say another unknown. Rubens? No. No, they. It's not good enough to be Rubens. Poussin. Oh, Nicholas Poussin. Interesting. Oh. Oh. Neptune. Really, not, not an unknown, but. He was during the French. Right. He did one with like a village, houses like um, uh, Greek, you know, Greek style buildings. Right. But he always did, yeah. Or the village, it was something like that. Where kind of Greek myths and mythology right. things. Mm -hmm. and huh. All right. <laughs> Oh, um, Ooh, lovely. Okay. Who is it? Monet. Yeah. Monet. Woman with the parasol. Hmm. Hmm. I think that was in our 101 class. Yeah, I think it was. Piano, Donna. There we go. They got that piano going. Hmm. Any guesses? It's it's one of the impressionists. If it's it could be Degas, that well, a Degas you haven't seen where he's. Painting because he did. They did paint each other a lot, but I don't. I I wouldn't swear to it. Costani, okay. Costani. 
Oh, cool. <laughs> it's the royal. Oh, very good. Now, one of the girls are running away. He doesn't have any clothes. Got naked boys chasing him. Naked boys are coming. Yeah, walking. Yeah. Yep. yep. Very good. Good job. <laughs> running along the beach. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's cool. Wow, I like that. Wow. Hey. That's cool. Okay, hmm. give it to us, Don. Blackwood. I've never heard of them, but that's really nice. Mm -hmm. It is nice. That's Let's see what year that was here. Yeah, I wish they'd give you the year in the museum it was in. Yeah. This is the... Houghton uh, Insula's Island of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Let's see. Oh, it's not even showing up here. Hey, Donna, next time we expect you to research all this ahead of time. <laughs> have our answers ready. You guys have the Google. I know. <laughs> She's not getting paid enough to do that much work. Okay, Ra Raphael's, uh, yeah, that's Raphael's uh, school. Raphael. The Athens School of the school of Athens. 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 Yeah. That's in the Vatican. Yep. In the I Raphael. like this one. Do you yeah. know the story of do you know who this is right here? That's Michelangelo. <laughs> yeah. And uh and the yeah, uh, Da Vinci. Da Vinci, yes. And, and he's uh, over here. You have Socrates somewhere. Uh, well so they they all are they're all famous people and I think yeah. I think Raphael himself is in here. He's right this here. He's he's looking out at you. Oh, that's Raphael. Okay. The the young Raphael. <laughs> With, uh, what, what perspective and the type of perspective it? It's linear perspective. perspective. That, is, that is that's actually a fresco. It's painted on one of the walls of the Vatican. Mm. There's four. Of you know, them. the Da Vinci one was painted after it was done, right? It was later on. They put in the Da Vinci's one. The, his well, no, I mean, Raphael knew Da Vinci. Yeah. And, this wasn't and, originally in the painting. And then when they when the Sistine Chapel opened up and Michelangelo was getting all kinds of attention, then he went, came back and he painted. Oh, really? This, so this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a, 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 a philosopher, but he put Michael, it's a brooding philosopher, but he put Michelangelo's head on there. Well, they're all famous people. Like mm -hmm. that's, Da Vinci is Socrates and Archimedes is there. And I mean, it's all. I think this is right. the Her 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 Hermedes or something like this. The guy who uh, said that you can never walk into a river twice. That one. That's who this is supposed Plato? to be. No. I uh, think it, it's Her Hermitus or something like that. And then Archimedes oh, is in here somewhere. Yep. School of Athens. Mm. All right. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's uh, that really pops right out. Possibly huh. Titian or Tim. Rembrandt? Looks okay. Venetian. Mm. It's got quite a look to it, and it's huh, red. Any face of Herod? Oh, the okay. Faces. There's Salome bringing the head in. There's John the Baptist. Oh yeah, the head. There's the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got yeah. A lot of look, look for the head. 
Look yeah, at they're all sure. dressed up. On the platter. They're oh, all Christine, dressed yeah. up. Yeah, I finally made it. I it was in another meeting that went too long. <laughs> yeah. All right. I've never seen this one. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's uh the faces really kind of pop out there at you. They do. All right. I don't want that dinner party. You don't <laughs> want that dinner party? <laughs> All right. I'm going to uh, share this out for a second. Let me get out of here. I've got another painting I want to show you. <clears throat> All right, uh, Melinda, this is for you. Can you identify this painting? <laughs> and the girl, the, and the, the artist. bird, the bird with the, the pearl. The hair. period. You have to tell us what period it is. And, what and artist, the artist. And the artist. Oh, oh my God. Chris, Christine found this gem for me. That's great. This is the uh, bird. With the uh, pearl fish, fish earring, fish earring, <laughs> <laughs> in the nose. <laughs> oh my God! Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's <is> funny. <laughs> Christine thought of you. She's like, "Oh, here, I'll, I'll blow it up a little oh bit here, so you can really see the detail in this fine piece of work, <laughs> Melinda." Even the, the the breaststrokes. The scarf, I just can't even believe the scarf and everything. <laughs> it's but just no so pearls. Clear. I think the girl is wearing pearls. Um, but this is Vermeer from what the 1500s imitation. <laughs> 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 Donna, are you showing us the real girl with the pearl earring for people who aren't familiar with? Oh, it? I guess I need to show yeah. that one. Yeah. Let me uh, let me pull it up so. Yeah. No, no, the, I think this okay. was either, yeah, I think it was Instagram I found this on, but I couldn't <laughs> resist. I had to send it to Donna for the class. For Thank those you. of you who. I was like waiting for you to come in so you I could. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, and I almost didn't. I thought, no, I at least want to get in for a couple minutes and then I want to request it so I can see what I missed. This is the painting we're, we're plunking her on. <laughs> That's the painting. This is one of Melinda's favorite paintings. <laughs> And I saw it. I saw it in person at the De Young. It was such a treat. Oh, it's small, though. I was surprised how small it was. Well, actually, I was. Yeah, I was telling Donna at the beginning of the class um, when I clicked on the link for her um, her art, her one hundred and one thing that she did. One of the next ones down was a whole bunch of things about the girl with the pearl earring. It was real interesting, and they were saying they don't think. The pearl is real. That that the model was really wearing a pearl. That's so oh. he did that, you know, just because of being able to the light and everything right. on it, and that mm -hmm. or that was a um, certainly a sign of wealth. And this is known as a trony, um, so it's not a real portrait per se because the turban and everything she's wearing would not have been uh, clothing that a, a typical. Dutch girl that era would be wearing so right more no, sort of dressing her up as a character so she it's not a portrait of of a person so much as it is a a painting of of you know just someone that's supposed to represent um, right something because she was either the house cleaner and or babysitter because he had so many children they mm. actually of course, the, that's what the book premised on, but mm -hmm. um, they have no idea. Like I said, I looked at a whole bunch of um, videos on it from the museum that has her, and they they think it's possible that it was one of his daughters, um, or you know, and it could be that she's not an exact reference, you know, an exact portrait of a real person, right? Mm -hmm. But Scarlett Johansson sure played the part well. Oh, it, it was a, it, that was a, a good, interesting book and a, and a good story. I mean, the, the, the premise behind it was pretty interesting. Did you see the movie, Melinda? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. I mean, just to get a sense of what 
you know, the town looked like, what the life was like just in general. I know they can't yeah. do it exactly, but it was just yeah. interesting to put a perspective to the, and I knew, I saw the movie before I saw the painting. What was uh, the name of the movie? Was it the... A Girl, Girl with the Pearl, Pearl Earring. <laughs> oh, it, okay. I, I thought it had another and name it's, to it. You know, it's yeah. been like, what, five... Oh, it's been longer than that. It's five, ten years, years ago. Yeah, years. look it up, yeah. Don. It's sure have to you look can it find up it on Netflix or somewhere. It'd be easy. To I don't see. know who wore it better. <laughs> 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 oh, just we couldn't resist that one. I think yeah. um, I think yeah. Vermeer is probably okay. rolling in his grave for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's funny. I'm glad you got to show that. Give us a little levity. I had to because I, I was waiting for you to come on. I'm like, where are I'm, you, Christine? Yeah, I'm in. I and was Melinda in a, said she wasn't going to stay the whole time. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. no, I was in an hour and a half meeting and the person was late that started it. So I got late being able to leave. So you were lucky right you in. got in. They they normally five minutes and you don't I get know, in but, five minutes. Oh, I know. Yeah, but the other I day I had, to, I had to email somebody and one yeah. I got in and one I didn't. Donna was waiting for you, Christine. I was yeah, waiting. I'm, I'm like, where are you? I, I've taken 250 classes. I'm well known. <laughs> yeah, you're well known. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we're at the end of our hour. <laughs> As always, good good Friday evening, Donna. It, it's a good Friday thank night you. thing. Thank you very thank much. You thank, thank you for coming. Donna. 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 Come Donna. attend thank our you. other uh, art classes. Everyone, thank go ahead and have a great weekend. And thank we'll you. see you, you all too. next time. I appreciate the treat. It's of always a treat just to see all those paintings. <laughs> Thanks, Melinda, for all your uh, insight and everyone on the insight for the, the art. I'm Thank laughing. You. Thanks, yeah. Donna. I appreciate yeah. the laugh. <laughs> Thanks for sending that. That was priceless. Well, I'm going to get the video because I want to see what I missed. <laughs> <laughs> we had some good ones. All right, everyone, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>